Now, the last time I had a chat to this man was before NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver back in 2021. He demolished six other superstars in a North American title number one contendership gauntlet. Since then, he's held championship gold in NXT, spent some time away from the WWE, facing some of the biggest names in the industry before making his grand return. And now you can see him running riot on Monday Night Raw. It is my absolute great pleasure to chat to Bronson Reed once again. Thank you for making some time, man. No, of course. Thank you for having me. I uh, just got back off the road from a Monday Night Raw loop, doing some live shows as well, Madison Square Garden, and I'm here talking to you. Well, I, I actually want to talk to you about uh, your run so far, because since you came back to Raw, you mentioned the uh, the Super Show at Madison Square Garden, which is yes. obviously a great bucket list to tick off. But let's talk about immediately after Raw, because you dominated Elias. And since you come <laughs> yes. back... We've seen you an unstoppable force on the roster. I mean, you manhandle superstars like Chad Gable. He's a guy that's head that's held the triple crown of the Raw, SmackDown, and NXT tag titles. We've mm-hmm. seen you defeat Akira Tozawa, who was a former Cruiserweight champion. You made a former world champion in Dolph Ziggler look like he was an amateur. Now, the Raw roster is stacked. So is there anyone else that is going to be a victim to the tsunami that you've got your eyes on? Yeah, I, I said everyone. You know, anyone that steps foot onto a Monday night uh, and enters that ring, they're facing Bronson Reed. And I don't see myself ever losing on a Monday night. So uh, at the moment, I am undefeated on Monday Night Raw. Obviously, I was in the elimination chamber, but it took three men to be able to get me out of that. Um, So I don't plan on losing. So anyone they put in front of me, I'm going to demolish them. It's funny you mentioned Elimination Chamber because, and you're, you're absolutely right. It took Montez Ford, Seth Rollins, and Johnny Gargano. Now, these are three former champions. Seth Rollins, we already know how credentialed he is. Johnny Gargano, who is pretty much was the heart and soul of NXT. And we don't need yeah. to wrap up Montez Ford enough. But uh, the fact that it took all three of them together to take out one man, you, in the chamber was insane and that was a hell of a premium live event debut for you as well i mean what were your some of your thoughts because it's a very brutal match and we've seen that that's a match that shortens careers yeah of course you know uh that's something that again it's a bucket list thing for me there's only certain matches that you can do in wwe and nowhere else and the elimination chamber is one of them hell in a cell is another one that i'd like to do uh and i was was very fortunate i came back steamrolling competition straight away and it took me a month and a half before i was going to be in a premium live event so i think my uh, track record so far since being back has been impressive and i look forward to being involved in more of them so we are on the uh, the road to wrestlemania and i know austin theory is going to be defending his united states championship against john cena at mania but you've actually beaten theory quite a number of times back in your nxt days and the yes. fact he only escaped uh with his championship in the chambers because it took three guys to get rid of you now I don't know, but Bronson Reed, United States champion, has a very nice ring to it. So uh, would another matchup with Theory, maybe this time on Raw, where it's more of your home turf, and I know he's been there for longer, would that be something that you'd like to see happen? Yeah, 100%. You know, I was the North American champion in NXT, and I think it's only fitting that I become the United States champion in WWE. Uh, uh, Austin Theory is someone that has grown over the last few years into a main event type talent. Uh, but I can see myself still steamrolling him as well. So uh, once he's done playing fun and games with uh, Big Match John, maybe he can step foot in the ring on a Raw and we can get it done. It's actually cool to see how many of the superstars that you went to war with in NXT are now on Raw and SmackDown because uh, someone that you basically scratched the surface with in NXT was Damian Priest. Now, He's in a much different place now with the Judgment Day, but I think the WWE Universe would really appreciate seeing you guys lock up again on Raw. Yeah, I mean, we, again, like you said, we only touched the surface. We were involved in a ladder match in in NXT, and we had a singles match where I beat him in NXT. Uh, But again, we're both two different beasts now, and he has that faction of Judgment Day, you know, alongside my friend Rhea Ripley, which makes things a little conflicting, but I know people would love to see that match again. 
Now, I briefly touched on your time away from the WWE, but I want to ask about your time in Japan because there were yeah. some absolute dream matches that you were a part of, including a few bouts with uh, Kushida Okada, who outside of the WWE universe, I reckon he's probably one of the biggest megastars in the business. So what was it like not only sharing a ring with him, but actually beating him? Yeah, I mean, it, this is, again, things that are unprecedented. People didn't think that I would be able to do, but I knew my time away from WWE, I needed to make sure I was staying impressive and being able to get a victory over someone like Okada, who you rarely see lay on his shoulders for the three-second count, uh, meant a lot to me, but it also meant a lot to me be, to be able to come back to WWE with purpose and and also with a, a newfound, uh, I guess, chip on my shoulder. Especially since you've like been able to prove yourself up against the greats. And I know that you also made your way back home to Australia, back to your home yes. city of Adelaide, which would have been great to sort of uh, go back after such a long time away. But uh, as you know, that that there is a plethora of Australians in the WWE right now. Did you think when you went back home, did you feel that the standard of uh, Australian wrestling has changed and that there are a lot more hungry talent here that can realistically make that jump like you have like Rhea Ripley has like uh like so many others that have that you've forged that path for yeah 100 percent. you know unfortunately I feel like uh uh during the pandemic things got put on hold for a little while especially for guys that were outside of the USA you know it was hard to sort of get here and, and try and make a road to get somewhere you know internationally uh, now that, that things are pretty much, you know, things are working again, premium live events, everything's happening on the road. I think I'd love to see another tryout in Australia and I'd love to see some of the talent there get a look in because I know there's there's so many great wrestlers there at the moment. And it also, it, it's something that I advocate still for now. You know, whenever I get asked about Australian wrestling, I will always speak about it. And that's the same with all the higher uppers in WWE. I always try to put over people from back home and hope that they, you know, become successful. You see guys like Grayson Waller on, on NXT doing really well. So, and that's just another jump from eventually him going from NXT to WWE. So I'm sure we'll see that in the future as well. Yeah. Fingers crossed. There's an insane amount of talent and uh, look, uh, you've, I've taken up a fair bit of your time, but it'd be yeah, remiss of days away from the start of the AFL season to not ask your opinion, because I know you're a massive Port Adelaide supporter. Yes. Power for very big winners during the trade period. I mean, they got the number yes. one draft, pick, Jason Horn Francis to the club. Now here's the thing. SEN's very own Kane Corns, a Port Hall of Famer is yes. downplaying your premiership chances. I mean, what are your thoughts for the team in 2023? Well, I haven't heard what he's said, but every year I go in with high hopes, obviously. I'm I'm one of those supporters that no matter what, I'm always gonna be like, We got a we got a chance, you know, we can get to the premiership. But again, with that pick, I think, you know, why not? We're such a well rounded team. I could see us getting to the finals and hopefully, you know, the grand final. Well, at least this in this year's showdown, you'll be able to wear the prison bars and oh, yes. On- Judging on the previous form, I think that you'll also be able to still hold bragging rights over Duke Hudson for at least another year. <laughs> yes, I hope so. I know Duke Hudson and Rhea Ripley, both big Crows fans. So like whenever whenever Port can beat them, I'm very happy. And I actually have a Prison Bars Guernsey here as well that I wear. So I'll wear it with pride. Oh, I know that that you can actually, if you if you have the time, scroll back through Bronson's Twitter because you could see him wearing those prison bars with absolute pride. But man, it has been an absolute pleasure to speak to you again. I really hope to see you feature on the road to WrestleMania. Hope to see you in Australia again. WrestleMania 39, it streams live to Australia on Sunday the 2nd and Monday the 3rd of April on Binge. Bronson Reed, once again, it's been a treat. Thank you very much for the chat, man. No, thank you for having me.